we're not going to do the mics. Skyler, just what's, uh, I mean, after everything last year, how long it's been since you've been out there for a game, what's, what's it feel like to have it be this close finally? It's been a long time coming, uh, you know, and it's been a, a week or, you know, a game, a date on the calendar that's been circled on, on mine for a long time. Um, you know, and saying all that, it's, I'm just eager to go out and, and go play, you know, and, and be out there with my teammates and be in the fire again. You know, I think I'm, uh, I've, I've stated it a couple of times. That's what I, I miss the most is just going out there and competing with my guys and, and having fun doing it, you know, and being able to come back uh, in a big time game like this versus a power five team and in Dallas at AT and T is is a special opportunity um, and uh, I'm, I'm very excited to get back out there again. Do you anticipate that there will be much rust for you to shake off once you get out there? I'm confident that I put in the work. Um, to, to prevent that, you know, not saying there there might be a little bit. I don't, I don't know. Um, that'll be something that um, I have to, to to you know wait and see. Um, but uh, I believe in in my preparation and the time that I put into to my game this summer and, and preparing for this game the past couple of weeks. You know, uh, to best uh, you know limit that from happening. Skyler, after going up against this defense all all camp. How much better do you think it is? How much do you think it has improved since we saw them uh, last time they were out there against Texas? Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, we've added some really good pieces to the puzzle back there uh, uh, on the defensive line with, with Timmy Horn and, um, you know, Julius Prince, Rusty East, uh, Reggie. You know, all the guys that we brought in uh, transfer-wise, I think, are, are really good additions to our football team. Uh, they're great players. They're great leaders, great teammates. You know, they're everything that you want and a player on the team. And, you know, I think ultimately, you know, having guys like, you know, Eli Huggins and Cody Fletcher and Jay Mack coming back, you know, I think that just, we have a lot of good uh, leadership on that side of the ball and guys that have played a lot of football. And I think uh, Deuce Green's done a tremendous job this off season. I mean, uh, I think he's one of the, the best players on our defense and, and he, he flies around, he, he, he makes plays, he plays physical, he's really long and, um, you know, makes it makes it hard in the in the past game. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, he, he picked me off just uh, last week. You know, on a play that I thought was was a really good play on his part. You know, and so um, you know, I'm excited to see those guys play. I think they they fly around. They they've been playing well together, and I think that's the most important part. You know, on both sides of the ball, and all 11 guys have to be on the same page uh, in order to be successful. And I think they've they've grown a lot in that aspect. Skyler, to all your time here and the things you've been asked to translate, but from your experiences, the injury, do you still feel like you have something to prove? Yeah, you know, I've, uh, you know, earlier on in my career, I would say yes, that, uh, you know, that I do have something to prove and, you know, to prove people wrong, prove the doubters, all that stuff, you know, but as I've gotten older, I've just realized you know that that stuff is uh, that stuff can can lead you down a, a dark road if you get caught up in and trying to prove people wrong and, and prove this prove that. You know, like I feel like as I've gotten older, I've I've understood that. You know, no matter what, you know, no matter how I perform, whatever the case may be, uh, there's always going to be something that is going to be critiqued or not good not good enough. You know, and uh, for me, you know, I'm I'm very you know, grounded in, in who I am as a person and as a football player. And, um, you know, I, I know that, you know, me going out there and giving my very best every single day is, is always enough. You know, no matter the end results, uh, win or lose, you know, if I if I do everything I can uh, to put myself and in, in this team in a, in a situation to, to be successful and to win, then that's all I can do. And I feel like if I, uh, you know, don't take any shortcuts in my preparation and uh, leading up into to, to games and, and that I can I can sleep at night no matter no matter what takes place. And you know, like I said earlier on in my career, if you would ask me that, I feel like I would give you a very different answer. But um, like I said, I'm very very grounded and, and humbled in, in in the situation that I am. I'm very grateful to be here and have this opportunity to play again. Uh, you know. Uh, thanking COVID, you know, I never thought I would say that, but truly, it did. It saved me a year that I could come back and, and play the game that I love the most. So um, I'm just, I'm excited to to get out there again and have fun.
Is there a point where, so to speak, you remember letting that go and, and shedding all that stuff? Yeah, I would say really the, a big turning point for me was in 2019 when uh, Coach Kleinman got here. Uh, really after that season, uh, truly, and even going into last year, you know, uh, at, you know, after the Arkansas State loss, you know, there was just a lot of stuff in the air, you know, about me and people, you know, spoke their mind and, you know, that's that's their opinion, you know, and I just realized, you know, it doesn't, you know, I'm my biggest critic, you know, and I'll be the first to say it, no matter what anybody thinks, you know, I'm, I'm harder on myself than anybody else is. And, but in saying that, you know, I understand that I'm not going to be perfect. And as much as I strive to be, and, and we, we all do on this team, we, we want to be, we strive for perfection every single day, but, in reality, there's going to be times where you're going to come up short and um, things may not shake out the way that you want them to. But the biggest thing is how do you how do you respond to that? You know, how do you funnel that energy into positive energy to um, propel you forward? You know, because that's that's the that's the biggest thing is life goes on. You know, the you know, the world keeps turning and um, you just got to take those experiences and, and lessons and, and learn from them. and. Um, funnel them in a direction to, to benefit you moving forward, and that's what I've tried to do. Yeah, you only got a little taste of it last year, but how excited are you to, at the prospect of having a whole season getting the ball to a guy like Deuce? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I, I think we all know Deuce is a really, really um, special player, um, and I think that he's just gotten better this offseason and has really perfected his craft in, in little aspects that – um, just having a year under his, his belt and some experience has benefited him um, in that aspect. And, um, you know, just we got to find ways to get him the ball. And um, whatever that may look like, uh, we got to get him touches and, and get him in space and let him let him be deuce, you know. And the biggest thing for, for him and, you know, what I'm going to encourage him and I have is, you know, to not – he doesn't have to be a superstar. You know, he, he just needs to be himself and let the game come to him come to them and, and make plays when, when they're presented. You've had pretty good success with uh, grad transfers the last couple of years. Coach Kleiman talked about the importance also of them fitting into the, to the locker room. Uh, does he seek input from, from players at all when they're, when they're considering somebody? That's yeah, I mean, I think that, I think that you know, the, the culture here is the most important part. Uh, and I feel like we've made a huge, huge um, growth. We, we, we've made a lot of growth in that aspect over the past eight months. And, you know, I think, you know, Coach Lyman's not going to bring anyone in here that's going to, that's going to, you know, take away from that. And like I said, on multiple occasions, every, every guy that he's brought in here and, you know, all 130 guys in the locker room would say the same thing. Every transfer that we've had, um, come in here has, has, has been a great addition to our locker room, to our culture, and you know, our, our great people, uh, first and foremost, above being good players. So that's uh, that's what you want. And I think our coaches do a really great job of, of um, doing the, the research and, and making phone calls and making sure that, you know, all the all the, the boxes are checked off um, before they bring a, bring a guy in here. So you've been around for a little while. Compare this this team in your eyes to the previous coaching teams you've been on? Well, I think we have the ability to be a really good football team. And, um, you know, what that means or what that looks like, I have no idea. And But I'll tell you where we're at right now. I'm, I, I feel very confident in who we are as a team. I feel like this is the most, uh, you know, like I said earlier on in, in fall camp, this is the most unselfish team that I've been a part of. I feel like we have a lot of playmakers, a lot of good players, but everybody wants to see the guy next to him succeed just as bad as they want to, um, personally. So I feel like when you have a team that has that that mindset, um, it, it, good things are gonna happen. And like I said, what that looks like, I, I have no idea. Um, but all we all we we can do is just focus on one day at a time and, and not skipping any any steps of the process, you know, that's the biggest part. I feel like where we've struggled in years past is we look ahead and um, get caught up and, you know, we're playing in week three, four, five, whatever the case may be. But I feel like truly our mindset right now is focusing on one day at a time, one game at a time and 
you know, letting the results take care of themselves. You know, I think Coach Kleiman has really put emphasis on on having that mindset of we got to focus on on today. You know, our, our focus. You know, my focus is at our 240 position meeting, and then all my focus is in you know that walkthrough before practice. And you know, it's just one step at a time, and not getting ahead of ourselves uh, to where we're not taking any shortcuts to the process to where. Whenever that game time comes, we're just pressing play and having fun. And when you have that mindset, you have that approach. No matter, no matter the results, no matter the outcome, you can you can sleep at night knowing that you you gave it all you got. After after the way last season ended, um, and maybe aside from that context, how important is this game for Kansas City? I think it's huge. Um, you know, anytime you get a chance to to kick off the season versus a power five opponent that's a proven program that has had a lot of success and is, is still, a, a, I mean, they're a really good program. And I think they do things, I, I know they do things right. Um, they're really well coached, you know, and they play hard, you see on film. I mean, they're they're very, um, very, very sound team that, that plays hard together and plays with a lot of passion, you know, and um, for us to, you know, be able to play on a stage like this to, to kick the season off and the way that last year went, you know, I think it's it's a big game for us. But uh, you know, it's it's something that you know us leaders and, and captains and whatnot are going to have to drive to this team that you know it, it, it's it's not too big of a moment, you know, for us. And it, it's something that we prepared for for eight months and we worked really hard for this moment and prepared for it. So. We just got to trust in that and, and believe in, in our work and, and let everything else uh, take care of itself. Scott, what have you seen from uh, Stanford staff too? Do Stanford linebackers, their back eight that really catches your attention? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I, I think they're they're really good. Um, they uh, on uh, on all all aspects. I think they're they're very um, <clears throat> you know. Uh, long and rangy guys that, that play hard and, and play fast, they play physical, uh, especially in, you know, their, their front seven or eight, you know, and, and in the back end, they, their secondary, they got some guys that play a lot of football. And um, it's very evident on film that they, they play physical and, and want to get their hands on and, and, and make plays, you know. And I think after watching the film from last year, it's, it's hard to assess everything just from how weird of a year it was. And I feel like they had some you know, personnel changes just here and there because of, of COVID. So, um, you know, I had some guys playing some different spots. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, where they're all at and, um, you know, seeing, seeing what that looks like. But uh, I think they're a tremendous football team and it's going to be a great challenge for, for us and um, you know, definitely something, uh, a team that we can't, you know, overlook or take lightly. You know, uh, we know that we're going to get their best and, uh, they're going to be prepared and, and they're going to play hard. So, uh, you know, we just got to be prepared for that. All right. Thanks, Kyle.